I suppose it's a common thing these days to offer trigger warning instead of just releasing potentially savage content without any warning out into the world. We're gonna talk about death, grief, and loss, but also a little bit of hope, and I hope that's okay. If you choose to stick around, welcome to my little studio. I was looking at my calendar and planning the week ahead and saw dad's birthday was coming up. I made a mental note to find him a gift right before I remembered that he's dead. It was one of those emotional roller coasters of realization all over again, even though he's been gone for years. You know how it is, maybe you've accepted reality, but sometimes you just forget. I've just finished working on a commissioned painting with that same theme. A bit of grief, a lost loved one. Honestly, a lot of the custom paintings I've created are from fellow mortals trying to find hope and peace in this life and looking to art as an opportunity to hold the good memories and find hope in the seemingly dark ones. I've never painted something for myself though when it comes to grief. I typically turn to dark humor to process loss, so this time I figured I might give painting my own grief a try. I'll even tell you a story about grief in the form of a crow. Just let me activate my story voice, and we'll start the story with Once Upon a Time. There lived a little old lady named Granny Leia. Remember her from a few videos back? Granny Leia was the village florist. All her plants thrived because she treated each one with love and showered them in pep talks and a magical potion she brewed up on Wednesday afternoons right after tea time. While Granny Leia also befriended the little woodland creatures. Her favorite were the crows though it wasn't always that way. When she first moved to Enchanted Hollow, Granny Leia found the crows to be a bit annoying and ominous. They're dark and looming, mysterious and unpredictable, but time went on and Granny Leia gradually befriended the crow. Granny Leia is an outdoorsy kind of gal, and the crow would visit when she was working in the garden. She found if she gave it some nuts and fruits, it would leave her alone for a while. This became a garden routine until one day the crow returned with a little button. To anyone else, the button was meaningless, but Granny Leia picked it up, a tear running down her cheek as memories of her husband Alvin flowed in. She remembered the time Alvin was working alongside her in the garden and his shirt got caught on a branch. They thought the button that had fallen was lost forever, but here it was. Leave it to the crow to find it. Granny Leia transitioned from content to nostalgic to frustration. She didn't want more buttons, no more reminders, no more crow. She shooed him away and kept digging in the dirt. Time went on, the crow returned periodically, one time with a nail from Alvin's tool shed that Granny Leia still hadn't touched. She thought of all the projects and repairs he had done around the house. Another time, the crow brought shiny pebbles Leia and Alvin had painted together. Granny Leia had insisted they craft a little garden for the fairies, complete with golden pebbles and paths. But one time, the crow brought Granny Leia a little wildflower from the corner of the yard. Alvin used to arrange them into a bouquet for their table. The usual frustration and anger she felt toward the crow broke at the side of the flower. Her heart overflowed up through her chest, a catch in her throat, and finally a waterfall of tears. She didn't have much room left for the anger too many memories. She knew the crow would just keep coming back. It was inevitable that she befriended it. So she did. 
She wiped a tear, took a deep breath, and went to the back of her closet. Her hand grazed the fabric she hadn't touched in years. Alvin's shirt, the one with the missing button. Granny Leia pulled it from the hanger, breathing in the faint, musty cologne. The shirt had seen better days. There were a few holes in addition to the missing button. She went to the kitchen and grabbed the scissors. She cut a few strips of the fabric and placed them on the windowsill. If the crow was going to stay, he would need some supplies for a nest. And he did, and the fabric was put to good use up in the tree. And the crow returned every now and then with trinkets and memories, and Granny Leia learned to embrace them, sometimes crying, other times laughing, always with a pain in her heart, but also a little more full than when she first had rejected the crow. She had grown grateful for his companionship that attempted to fill the hole that had formed those years ago. At the start, I saw grief the same way I view a disease or injury. You get hurt, you heal over time, maybe a scar is left behind, but it fades into a memory. Grief isn't like that. It's more like the crow. Maybe an ugly, ominous bird at first. He keeps coming back, so you eventually befriend him. Sometimes he flies away and leaves you alone. Other times he comes back with trinkets, little reminders of the memories he carries. And he flies away and returns like the ebbs and flows of the ocean. And maybe the most peaceful choice is to allow him to take flight in his natural rhythm, accept him when he returns, and fully embrace life when he has taken flight away again. Normally, this is where I would conclude that Granny Leia lived happily ever after the end, and I suppose the phrase is fitting in a way. She did choose to live happily, but the term the end doesn't seem fitting. At least it wasn't for Granny Leia, who knew that at the end of a good book is always a sequel. And like a series of books. And then a movie, a TV series, a fan fiction break off, a remake of the movie. Endings are a scam. But grief, no matter how painful, is proof that love can live forever.